Okay, so the first try, which is the one I suggested you start, would be, so following the approach using Z, we obtain Z dot equal to A times Z plus B times U plus the additional term which is A times XSS. So if we apply an input U which according to what we expect is uh, minus K times um, let's say minus K times Z for this system, right? So you, someone gives you this system and all you know is minus k times the state and the state is z now, you just apply this. Then what you will obtain is that the resulting closed loop system will be, when you put the minus k here, right? You end up with a minus b times k and this multiplied by z and then a x s s. So the design, so for stability, we will need to pick a minus b k less than zero. Again, these are all the scalar terms. But the catch here is that the steady state of z is, remember a steady state, the definition of a steady state is when there is no more change in the variables. So the derivative will go to zero and then we will have from this equation zero equal to a minus bk times z at the steady state they know that as zss plus a times xss which was our constant which we said it will be treated as a steady state later on so the steady state for z if we solve for this with a minus b times k less than zero we can divide by it so this will be um, equal to minus a xss over a minus bk okay so what we see here is that even though we get a stability this implies that every solution to the closed loop system in Z coordinates converges to minus A excess S over A minus BK. So Z will converge to a number different than zero, therefore in the X coordinates since z is equal to x minus xss, x will converge to a number different than xss. So we have not accomplished what we wanted to accomplish. Okay. There was a solution, I saw your solution, which was realizing that something else should be added here because I have this additional term. This is not affecting the stability, but it's affecting the steady state. Okay, uh, in some cases you can cancel that out following what I'm going to write in a minute and that will correspond to canceling through the input. So I'm going to pick u equal minus kz and then notice that u gets multiplied by b, right? So what I would like to do, I guess the simplest way to do this would be to get rid of B. Oops. Get rid of B. And now when B times U multiplies this term here, I get whatever I put here. And then put to that minus A XSS. And then when, now I plug these things here, the closed loop will be 
a minus b k for z so it comes from the plant a minus b k from here and then the next term will be plus b times 1 over b so that's going to cancel minus x s s times a plus a times x s s so then these two will cancel and now I will design a minus b k less than zero for stability and then the steady state of z is zero equal to a minus bk times zss and this being less than zero implies that css is equal to zero therefore <coughs> every solution to the closed loop in C coordinates converges to zero and then the bonus of this is that then we go to the x coordinates so then now I have x dot equal to ax plus b u now u will be minus k times z z we define as x minus x s s and these would need to have minus b 1 over b times in this case positive a x s s okay and what you see here if I did this right, did I? I should have. Let's see. It is true. Okay. So let's keep going. So now I will multiply uh, this by. So I will collect x terms, so it will be a minus bk times x. This is from here and here. And then the next piece would be, there's a minus up. Okay, let's, let's get, I think this is the right feedback, right? This is the right feedback, so let's keep going. So this is this guy and this guy. And then the next term is plus b minus k minus, so this is plus b k x s s and then the last one is um, b divided by b is 1 minus a x s s okay and then we group this again and then we get a minus b k x <coughs> minus a minus b k <coughs> so this is the closed loop system in the x coordinates. So what is the steady state of x? Is as XSS because now when I plug zero here, this will be call it XSS with some obvious notation. And this XSS tilde, something that I started with as desired, but since a minus bk and a minus bk are in front, these are going to need to be equal because a minus bk is less than zero, cannot be zero. So the steady state equation for this will be zero equal to a minus bk, all that times x minus XSS. And then again, I call it tilde SSS. And then they have to match because 
for this to be zero, this cannot be zero, otherwise we lose stability, this has to be zero. So the solution here was essentially inverting the input coefficient and then it, up, applying enough compensating <laughs> factor for the steady state. It turns out that that compensating factor, that addition that we have here, this is what is going to keep the system at that particular desired value. Is if you think about physically grab a pendulum type system, we were up to today always stabilizing zero angle, but now we want to stabilize 45 degrees. In order to stabilize 45 degrees for the pendulum, you need to constantly apply a torque when you are at 45 degrees, otherwise it's going to fall. So that's a similar effect. It's this additional input that we have here is introducing the needed input to induce the steady state or the equilibrium point. <clears throat> so in general terms, before I go in general, does this computation make sense? Okay. Now, we, we are able to see the steady state here because this is a scalar sample problem because we can invert and move things around. When this is a state, a space with larger dimension, we need to be a little bit more careful and that's what we're going to need to do now. <coughs> Okay, so this is following section seven point four point five point two in the textbook. The previous example. suggest a general control input of the form u equal to some steady state value minus k times x minus xss where if x is equal to xss then u is equal to uss induces the steady state xss in the system similar to the pendulum analogy now we are going to apply for this feedback to the state space model. So the state space model x dot equal ax plus du and y equal to cx plus du in a steady state. conditions becomes well the derivative of x since we are in a steady state is going to be equal to zero so we're going to have a zero there equal a times x in a steady state plus by the choice of this input up here when x is equal to xss this goes to zero, so the input becomes USS. So this will be B times USS. And then the output we could also define it as a steady state value, YSS equal to C XSS plus B USS. So that's the <clears throat> the state state conditions. The idea is that 
to obtain values of XSS and USS such that we can guarantee that the output converges to the desired YSS. To steer the output Y to YSS equal to some reference, call it RSS, which is the problem that we started studying with the final value theorem. We conveniently define XSS equal to some matrix that we need to find. The book calls it NX times RSS. And then the input will be similarly defined as USS times Sun matrix, that we're going to call it NU, and then this also multiplies by RSS. So if we plug, if we plug these XSS into here and here, then we end up with A and X times RSS, and if we plug these USS into here, then we end up with B times NU RSS. So we end up with an equation on RSS. And then the same for the bottom. This will be RSS equal to C times, and when we combine those two equations, we get the following. A, B, C, and D are given. This multiply the knowns. Nx and u. <coughs> And this has to be equal to zero, one. The reason that we get zero and one is because this zero here requires that this multiplication leads to zero for the given RSS. And one is because YSS is equal to RSS, RSS, RSS factor become um, common, and then you end up with one. So plugging this into the above, we obtain the following matrix equality. Okay. And we know what to do from here, right? When we have this matrix to be invertible, we invert, so we take the inverse <coughs> NX and U equal to that and finally what we can now say is that the resulting feedback which we gave up here
we gave it up here u equal u s s minus k x minus x s s becomes u equal so u s s we define it to be n u r s s so this would be n u r s s and then x s s is n x r s s that's the feedback in general so this is inducing for inducing a steady state And this is um, for stability. Now this um, feedback log can be rewritten a little bit so the book uses a rewrite of this which is probably a good thing to write down so first move the kx outside so this will be minus kx and then whatever is left attach it to the r oops sorry this shouldn't be rss We know that R is going to convert to RSS, so <clears throat> so this is minus that KX plus NU, and then from here minus minus plus K and X, and all these multiplying R. This is what the book calls N bar. So now you end up with a feedback of the form u equal minus kx plus n bar times r. And actually this n bar is the number that was proposed for that example. So for that example, n bar was equal to minus a over b and rss was equal to xss so whenever we can um, Solve for these so-called tracking equations. We can track any reference. In any dimension, which is quite nice. There is a diagram that you can probably imagine, which is, you know, this is what we've been doing so far. Cut it off right there with a zero here. Zero there. This is what we've been doing so far. Just minus kx. And what we're doing now is adding the um, reference. But that reference is pass through a pre-filter, which in this case is a static pre-filter and bar. So it's a multipl multiplication block. And um, if 
it again it, it scales the right way the effect on the right hand side of the C dynamics so that then the steady state is what you want it to be is that degree of freedom and to solve it we need to solve for that equation okay questions So, I will not write it here in details, but I will show it to you. We did an example, lecture 16, about this um, oscillator problem, and that is also in example 7.17, right after this in the textbook. So you can look at that. What I wanted to show you is the following example, which is a DC motor. So this is example 718, where we would like to introduce a reference input. And the equations of the DC motor are in example 5.1. And uh, they're given by these expressions right here. And we are doing uh, feedback of one of the variables, so it's um, a static single input, single output. And if we go to those equations, which are equations 7, 8, 7, if we plug this A, B, C, and D, and then we solve it by inverting that matrix A, B, C, D, then we end up with the following in X and the following in U, which when everything gets multiplied, which was precisely n u plus k n x, then that n bar number becomes k1. So I wanted to show you this because the design of the k is for stability, but it's also playing a role in the input that you need to apply for tracking. So that needs to be carefully chosen because of if you pick it too large, then you will potentially amplify um, noise in the reference as well. But this is the choice of n bar. So essentially, you do design your k separately than a uh, tracking problem. You close the loop with the minus k, as in that diagram I show you, and then you add a reference that is k1. It's a piece of that k for that particular problem. And you see here the trajectory is converging to the steady state that uh, was prescribed. More interesting, the, the feedback that you obtain, which is natural, is given, by, is given like that. So let's take a look at the second one. Okay. So you're measuring x1 and x2 in this case, so it's a state feedback. Um, but the tracking is only on the output, it's only on x1, okay? So you get tracking on the first component. So as you see, x1 minus r is the one that you compute the error because you're caring about x1 converging to r, okay? And if r has a constant a steady state, which appears to be the case from the plot, then x2 will go to zero. But when you put it into, into the n bar form, see what you get? This is the feedback that you need, if you remember, for that problem to get stability. All you're doing is adding what is called the feed forward term. This is a function of time. You need to have r of t in order to implement this to your system. And that will induce essentially the reference steady state. So that's how this works. 